introduction that wasn't even on, and we are live, the Google says, uh, both broadcasting live out to uh, Google Hangouts and also crosscasting to DS106 radio, and I'm just hoping that my levels are okay because I've never really done this whole crazy setup before, but that's really not what I wanted to do. Um, Let's see, Leslie says, can't hear you, but can't hear the other. Okay, because I'm the only one speaking. So, Daniel, give us, like, a good oration here. A good oration. Does that yeah, mean I have to, like, recite yeah, some Shakespeare or something? You Use your use your uh, your teacher voice. No, you don't have one. Use have your stage voice. voice. <laughs> my, my stage voice. I don't really have one of those either. I don't, uh, I'm not made for stage. <laughs> I'm, I'm much more of a behind-the-scenes kind of person. Okay. I think everybody can hear me. I can hear me. Okay, that's Daniel Zimmerman, uh, student of DS106 in fall of 2002. Notice I didn't say previous. I almost did. Uh, it was close. <laughs> it was close. The one thing about my setup is I seem to be um, just getting one channel of sound. Uh, I don't know if that will bother anybody. Uh, but the point here is I'm going to do some screen sharing. Um, radio silence, says Stephen Hurley. Wow. Okay, check one, two. Stephen Hurley, I'm talking to you, Stephen Hurley. Uh, can you hear me? I'm talking, Stephen Hurley. Oh, crap, now I just lost the movie. Uh, the radio broadcast is not essential, but I was hoping to do it, and I wanted to get on the show. So, uh, Stephen Hurley, uh, give me a clue again if you can hear me. Oh. Uh, Stephen Hurley's got me. If Stephen Hurley has me, that's good here. Um, I'm going to give Julia a few minutes to uh, log on to the Hangout. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, no. Come on, Julia. Come on in. <laughs> She's saying, no, you have to be here. You come in. Some people are so shy. Uh, Jason, do you have a mic hooked up? I see you... Uh, Hanging out there. He uh, he typed in the chat. He said he was going to stay muted. Oh, okay. So that right, uh, he said he had other noise going on in the background. Other noise. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Good to see you, Jason. Uh, always glad to uh, be trading ideas with you and whatnot. And uh, so I'm going to get going. Hopefully, uh, Julia's like playing all shy now, and she's she made a promise to uh, Nigel, you know, that one one thing or give one do one back. Um, so, uh, not essential. People come in. I'm going to re record this. Um, the whole idea here was to do some screen sharing to give people a little idea about what I think I figured out about DS106 radio. Um, again, there, there's some things which still aren't quite the same. I know it frustrates people that um, if you use NiceCast, it doesn't really push out your metadata when you broadcast. We know it. Uh, it's a there's some complex things going on, and I don't fully understand exactly how this system works, but I've spoken to Grant about it, and, and there's a couple options uh, that we can look at. Um, but one of the things is uh, the radio station is like five, four or five different pieces of software. So there's airtime, which I'm going to show you, which manages the whole schedule and thing. There's something called liquid soap. I don't know what it does, but it's important. And then it sends the radio signal over to... Um, Icecast, which actually does the broadcasting, um, and right, you know, the thing missing now is there's no really good way to know if someone is broadcasting live. Uh, we're gonna try to figure something out. Hi, Leslie. <laughs> Stop yawning, Leslie. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is try to do some uh, screen sharing and talk through um, what I've been able to figure out because what's really important. And this is what I want everybody to stencil in on their brains. We do not want dead air. Dead air is not our friends. We don't want radio silence when you go to listen to DS-106 radio. And uh, the idea here is it's a little bit different than the old server setup where there used to be just one single playlist called Auto DJ that would just keep on going no matter what. Uh, the new system uh, there's not really an ongoing list. You have to program it into the schedule, um, which kind of at first seems a lot more complicated, 
Um, but I really believe in Grant Potter's vision. I mean, he's the dude who started this whole thing, so you got to buy into what Grant says. Um, and it offers a lot more flexibility as to what we're going to be able to do in terms of uh, eventually if people want to have regularly scheduled shows or the things. But the whole idea now is to make sure there's something playing all the time. So if you're with me, let's see, Jason, okay, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to start doing some screen sharing. And um, Daniel, you might have to let me know if, uh, I might have to enlarge my screen because quite often um, it's not uh, quite the perfect thing. Let's see, I, want, I need this window and uh, get rid of the Google Hangout window. Uh, so you don't go crazy with uh, multiple windows. So uh, if you're with me now and confirm this, Daniel, do you see the airtime uh, source fabric? Page? Yes, I do. All right. It might not be fully legible, so let me know if you need me to make it any bigger. Um, generally, this needs to be made a little bigger. So um, this is uh, the login to get into the interface that allows you to do things on the radio station. Um, and uh, there is a little hitch. Something I did when I was trying to change some of the um, uh, interface items is somehow I messed up the login page. So if you go just to ds106rad.io, you'll get an error. So you have to go to ds106rad.io slash index.php. Uh, it's kind of cumbersome. Eventually, I think we'll fix it. Uh, username, ds106. Um, the password is lowercase, uh, good old we jam econo. Um, if you forget that, I think um, we should have this inside the uh, the documentation, etc. Uh, I can't see the hangout, so I don't know who is Julia in there. <laughs> if she's still being shy. Anyhow, so log into the interface. No, Julia's not in here yet. Okay, okay. Thanks, Daniel. I got my back. So. Uh, a couple things that are useful to know uh, when you log in is uh, the very top is sort of a status of what's going on, and it lets you know according to the schedule what played previous, what is currently scheduled, and uh, what is next. And the orange bar gives a sense about how much of the content has played through. Um, on the right side, very important, uh, it shows a source streams. Uh, and you can see that the one next to master source is right. Someone, yeah, someone's got their mic up. Um, master source has that orange like on indicator. That means someone is live. So if you're really, really pressed to know if the radio, someone's broadcasting live, this is about the best we can do right now. Log in and look at this top uh, display. If just the scheduled play is lit up, that means what is uh, used to be auto GJ is playing. Um, on air just indicates that something's broadcasting and you can actually click, I'm not going to do it because I get crazy feedback, this listen button will pop up a little player so you can uh, just do a sound check of what's playing. Also really important is, um, I may have to make more, where is that? Over on the top right hand uh, corner is the current time. The server time is Pacific time. I have no problem with that because that's my time zone. Uh, if you have an issue with the time zone, complain to Grant. But the station sort of runs in Pacific time zone. Now there's a couple things happening right now. On the left side, we get sort of like the overview of our library. And um, there's lots of things in the library. There's things that have been uploaded. So if you want to add content uh, to the station, you can. I think we're at about 75% of the capacity. Um, there is an Add Media button. Um, and just to show you that um, it can be done, I will um, find something I just downloaded. Um, let's see if this is uh, MP3, hopefully. Uh, I did a Kickstarter project. And um, I just got the sounds from this uh, project called the, um, what's it called, the tank or something. It's this giant old water tank in Colorado that people are doing these um, audio experiments with. So you can drag over a list of files to upload um, and then just uh, start doing them. So you can upload a batch. Um, don't go crazy. Uh, you know, Grant will let us know when there's a problem with this space and will probably clean house. Uh, it's not infinite. Uh, but it's pretty big. Um, 
but certainly we encourage you to share stuff. But you really don't necessarily have to upload stuff to contribute to the radio station. There's so much stuff on there, it's more important that we uh, get stuff into the mix. So this just uploaded. Um, it'll sort of uh, give me a little indicator when it's done. Uh, that's all done. And if I go to my library, um, right now I have it uh, listed uh, and I'm waiting for it. It's probably still processing. Um, I generally um, keep this listed. These uh, labels at the top, you can order the file listing like in a file menu. And I keep things uh, with the newest stuff at the top because it's, it's more interesting. So you can see this is the one I just uploaded. Um, and sometimes uh, s people upload stuff and there's like no metadata. You can actually edit the metadata if you want just by going edit metadata. That'll come into play later. But I just want to give you a sense where uh, the library is. Now an interesting thing that I just found out is if you go to now playing, um, that gives you a snapshot about what is scheduled. And the great thing about the schedule is uh, right now what's in green is sort of what's on the schedule. And I have that set for an eight hour block, uh, block of um, a crosscast from WFMU. So I'm going to show you later how to bring in web streams. But the beauty of the schedule is you can change anything in the future. The stuff that's scheduled for the next uh, eight hours, which starts at uh, midnight PST, um, if I decided that this thing I just uploaded is so great, I can just drag it over and I can drop it anywhere into this future schedule and basically uh, reschedule what's been uh, put into the mix. And if I decide that I want to move something around, um, I can do this. So. Um, for example, the other night I was playing an hour recording I did of one of Jason Toll's show, and he came on and he only heard the ending of it. So I just found it in the library and I just grabbed it and threw it into the next slot in the future. So you can play around with what is going to be playing just next by picking and choosing from this library. Uh, there are other things you can do in the library that will make it useful uh, to build things. So you can create playlists. Um, in the library, and uh, let me switch windows here. I have no idea if everybody's following this, but um, in the library window, you can create a new playlist. And I can, if you decide that you want to regularly put some of your music that you want in a particular order into the mix, um, I can say, and then um, I'll just save it. And um, and then what I can do is I can use the interface of what's uploaded. And it's usually better if you go over to files, so that's all you uh, get to choose from. And I can go through and pick stuff like I might pick this that I want to put in here, which is uh, the file I just uploaded. I know if you're listening on the radio, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but I'm clicking, uh, basically just selecting all kinds of files, and I'm going to add to my current playlist. So a playlist works like any other playlist. You can shuffle the order around. Uh, you can change things. Uh, if you're going to put together a playlist, I would suggest doing at least an hour's worth of stuff so it really fits in the schedule well. You can do more, um, and there's even a shuffle button if you want to shuffle this around. Now, the thing about a playlist is every time you do a playlist, it's going to play it in the same order, which might be fine. Um, and we have some playlists in here. You can look at the different playlists to see which ones we have. Um, I went through, and uh, because we all love Dr. Garcia, say we all love Dr. Garcia because she's listening. <laughs> um, I put together a playlist uh, I call it Gina and it's got some stuff she just recorded when she uh, went to hear the mud flaps play and there's a couple other things that are uploaded and there's a parody of, G of Gina uh, because she loves that parody from uh, the DJ parodies we did about two years ago um, so um, a basic playlist is good if you want to put together stuff uh, that you always want in the same order but the real power comes in these things called smart blocks and if you do this in iTunes, they're called, I think, Smart Playlist. And um, it allows you to create things uh, that are dynamic based upon the content that's in the system. So if we want to do a new Smart Block, uh, what they're called, and I'll just call this uh, uh, Crazy Smart. This is a demo. I don't exactly get the right parameters going. So what you do is you pick search criteria based upon a lot of uh, information that's available. So it's metadata as well as when stuff is uploaded. So uh, one of the neat things you can do is, um, well, let's just do uh, last played. 
So uh, I do a playlist sometimes that um, last time is played, and then I always get this wrong because I forget the date. Matt. So I'm going to. Uh, it will tell me if I uh, did this right. Okay, so what I'm making here is a smart playlist um, that says it was something that was last played since uh, May 30th. Um, that's kind of neat. So you can do also older, so less than. If you want, if you want to get newer stuff in the mix, I could switch this as less than. And every time I do generate, um, it's creating a playlist based upon these search criteria, and um, and let me see it. Now the thing is. This is a static smart block, so it's letting me use the search criteria. Um, the real power is when you make it dynamic. And in that sense, it's going to do that search based upon how the library may have changed. So I can create uh, this new one. I would already lost my name. Um, I'll just call it WOW. Um, that's going to um, help bring out stuff that hasn't been played since May 30th. There's also ones to do uh, newer. I'll show you uh, a couple examples of some other playlists. This is one I called uh, Let It Rock. So if you want to look at these smart blocks, um, that'll give you an idea of how it played. So the uh, Let It Rock smart block um, is one uh, whose genre contains the word rock. So if someone uploads some new stuff tomorrow, some rock and roll, some Led Zeppelin, some who, and it's uh, rock and roll or rock in the genre field of the metadata, um, it will come up in this dynamic playlist. Uh, I have another one here. Let's see. Where is... Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Because we love David Kernahan so much, um, I made a photo for life list. So... Um, this one will uh, bring up any music uh, where the creator or the uh, composer of the music is uh, followers of the apocalypse. So as Kernahan uploads new music, uh, this playlist will update. Um, I'll make it dynamic because it should be dynamic because that's more interesting. So smart playlists are really powerful uh, because uh, they allow um, them become flexible again as the content changes. All right. So that's a lot of the library stuff. Uh, there's one more thing that I want to show you, uh, which gets really trippy, um, and that's these web streams. And that's, again, you heard earlier, if you're listening, uh, before um, Stephen Hurley came on, uh, we have an eight-hour block of WFMU uh, that's set. So um, if you can get the, UR, the proper URL, and there's a little bit of a trick to that, of... Um, the station, uh, you can actually add uh, radio stations that already uh, broadcast uh, live to the web. And we've got a couple on here. Um, when Julia's visiting, we, we manage. It's kind of hard to get CBC uh, MP3 streams, but we kind of found a back door. So I've got CBC Radio 3 in here as a web stream. Um, KBU from Portland. Uh, KCSB, I think, is from uh, Santa Barbara. Uh, KJZZ is my favorite uh, NPR station from Phoenix because they have the best blue show ever on Sunday's night, Sunday nights, and quite a few more. So the trick of this is um, finding the right kind of stream, and this is where it gets really crazy. So um, I've been using this site. Uh, this is uh, www.usliveradio.com. I'm not just saying US Radio is great. It's just here for um, demo purposes. These are all kinds of uh, links to web streams. Uh, that uh, you can listen to some radio station. Some of the links don't work, um, and some of the forms that they are in, I know this is real. Um, if they're web player, that means that's Flash, that won't work. What we need is a URL that will actually load right in the browser. So um, there's a couple ones. I'm going to try to make sure. Um, here, this one uh, from Sacramento, uh, Noise Professor's Territory. KWOD, Alternative Rock. Um, I'm looking at the link. It's a PLS file, um, which is a playlist file. If you see an M3U file, what's going to happen is I want to hear this, and I click it. Oh, that's even worse. It's not found. <laughs> So that's a bad player. Let me try to find a different one. Uh, KOI, ASX links won't work. Um, there's a bunch of these that won't work. So um, here we go from uh, Stanford, California, um, home of all those crazy mooks. Uh, must be 
KMOOC. Uh, let's see if this is a MOOC station. So when I click a .m3u file, that's downloading something. It's meant to launch in something like iTunes or a Windows Media Player, um, which is really not helpful to us. But find that file. If you open it up on a text editor, a plain text editor, I use bbedit, um, you go inside this file, there's actually a URL that's got an MP3 stream on it. I know that one's going to work, hopefully. And uh, when I go browser, paste this puppy in, um, if you come up with something like this, I don't know if you can hear it because I don't know if I have my uh, stream set up, some classical music, but if you come up with something that actually plays directly in the browser, you're golden. So I've got KZSU, I have no idea what this is. Um, so I'm going to go back to my radio station and if I want to add this as a web stream, I'm going to come over, I'm going to do a new web stream. Um, I'm going to paste this URL in here. Um, I'm going to give the station a name, so I think it was K five things. Now here's one thing that may be not readily apparent. The default length that it comes up with is 30 minutes, uh, which is not really helpful when we're trying to fill some of these long blocks. So I would suggest setting the default length to hours or eight hours. I'll make it four. Um, eight hours makes it easy, as you'll see in a second when we uh, throw it into the schedule. Um, you can play for less than that, but if you want to fill some blocks of time with this classical radio station, it sounds like, um, you can do that. Are you with me, students? <laughs> Let's see if I'm if following. Is... I got you. You're following. Okay. Because, you know, I never know when I'm going kind of crazy here. And uh, go back to, uh, oh, in my uh, browser right here. I hear clinking in and out. Uh, so people are watching. Oh, look at that. I love that barbershop effect. Hi, Andy. So uh, I'll just put that away for right now. So now, that was all the prelude. This is the important part, the calendar. This is the thing that programs uh, what's behind the station. And this is really set up to actually run sort of a, um, an internet radio station uh, where you would give people access to run their own shows. So um, you would schedule blocks of time um, in which to... Um, that people would take over and do like an hour show on Mondays, etc. Um, to make sure that we have something filled every time, I came up with this idea to do three eight-hour blocks a day. So there's 24 hours of programming a day. Now by scheduling this, these blocks are repeated every week. So this is the current week. If I go into the next week, those same blocks appear, but there's nothing in them. They have no content. They are just sort of a placeholder. Um, that says that we're going to have every eight hours something new is supposed to come on, but nothing's there. So right now we are in, remember PST, under Thursday 8-1, you can see a little green indicator that we're in this block here. Now where you see an orange bar, that means someone, actually me, has gone in and filled the content. So we're good. But looking out into the future, we can already see tomorrow night um, and a bit on Saturday that we don't have stuff filled out. And that's where we need the volunteers to come in, to go in every now and then and maybe just say fill in a couple blocks of time. And you can even go a couple weeks out if you want to be proactive. Um, you can't break anything, but if we do this, um, if we have sort of a screen every week that has orange bars filled all the way across, we will really be rocking and filling out the auto DJ. So I'm going to go in for Fridays. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go to Add, Remove Content, and we get somewhat of a similar interface. On the left side, we get our library. On the right side, we sort of get uh, this eight-hour block that I called Friday Third Shift, and it's empty. There's nothing in there. So there's, I can use all my kind of media types. So I can go through files. Um, I can search for stuff that has, uh, let's see, and Brian is. So there's some Brian Jackson stuff. So I can start dragging this stuff over. Um, I can, um, I just added one thing. I can start selecting multiple uh, stuff. Uh, there's a couple Brian Alexander stuff. I, and I can add this to my selected show. Uh, so as I'm adding stuff, um, 
you can see on the bottom, well maybe you can see, the red indicator says I still have 6 hours, 15 minutes, and 12 seconds to fill. So you can go picking and choosing um, through the interface here uh, if you want to, but there's a lot of stuff and that's a little bit tedious. So that's where it becomes better to use playlists. Playlists are already pre-set up uh, collections of things. Uh, get rid of the Brian in the search field. Um, and so what I can do is, let's say I just want to add uh, that Gina uh, set and I can drag it in here, I can drag it below, but basically everything that was in that playlist gets added. And I scroll down to the bottom, wow, I still have five hours and six minutes. So I got my story box stuff I can throw in there. Uh, there's some Twilight Zone stuff. Um, this isn't the greatest radio because this is kind of random, um, which is not bad. Uh, we'll just throw that stuff in there. Um, but you can see if you add a playlist uh, to the mix, uh, it takes less time to fill stuff out. So uh, I still have about an hour and 57 minutes to go in here. I can go over to my Smart Blocks. And so I can, this one I just did called WOW, let's see what happens when I throw that one in here. Uh, let's see what happens. And down at the bottom, uh, we're keeping, I, uh, I still have 38 minutes to fill. So it's always good to do Followers of the Apocalypse no matter what. People love hearing uh, David Kernahan's music. So we throw that in there. And now that I scroll down towards the bottom, we start to see there's red. That's all stuff that's over the limit. Uh, which is fine. It just means it, it'll get uh, cut off. And at the very bottom, it says plus nine minutes and 43 seconds. This is what we want. We want more than eight hours of stuff in the block. Uh, I click OK, and I'm going to go back to my calendar. Go back to my calendar, which sometimes this interface doesn't always load. When you come back to the calendar and it does load, it won't necessarily show you that orange line across. You generally have to reload the browser uh, to get that thing to come in. This is why my screencasts were so crappy because uh, stuff went across. So this is the block I just filled in the last Friday 3 shift. You can see that um, it's now orange all the way across, which is good. Uh, I can come in on Saturday. The easiest thing to come in if you just want to fill in a lot um, is use the, um, the web streams. So again, the web streams are beautiful, especially if you set up the duration to be those eight-hour uh, clunks, because you can just say, I want eight hours of CB3 radio, CBC radio, and I've really enjoyed listening to that. I'm glad we found that, Julia. Uh, pop that one in, and then here's what I'm talking about. Over on the bottom uh, right, or the middle right here, the eight to, uh, what's that, 1600, it doesn't show any changes until I refresh. It's kind of quirky software, like all software. Uh, but if you do refresh, now you can see that it's full. And just to clean, uh, make things out, I will um, go in and do add remove content. And I will uh, go in and uh, I'll pick another uh, web stream. So for uh, Saturday night, I think we should all be grooving out to WFMU. Um, so if we, you know, if someone wants to come in, one thing you can do is find a good collection of web streams that work. Um, there is some sort of um, uh, radio event coming up, I think, that Grant and I were talking about, um, where it's like a day where they're um, showcasing um, internet radio stations. So it would be great to have like a full week or a full day of just stuff that's crosscast, sort of to give tribute to the other radio stations uh, that are broadcasting. So the real key here, again, is just going in um, somewhere into the future um, and uh, filling in some of these blocks. You don't have to do the newest thing. If I really say I want to do the Wednesday 8 a.m. to uh, what was that 4, 4 p.m. slot, I can come in here. I can go add, remove content. Um, I can go again to my, uh, I like doing smart blocks because you just never know what you're going to get. So I like this one, looking out for track number one. Um, that's just stuff that has a zero one in the song title, like when you rip a CD. Uh, so it's the first track from stuff, so you get an interesting mix. Um, there's also looking out uh, for track number four. Um, this is one of Grant's, Less Mook, More Moog. <laughs> I have no idea what it is, but it sounds cool. So I, I'm always throwing that uh, into the mix here. And you can see we're already over. So in two clicks, uh, two smart blocks, I filled an eight-hour block. And uh, again, uh, the calendar doesn't reflect that until I show, but um, as long as all the forward blocks are filled out, 
we will always have uh, stuff to play uh, in the mix. And uh, that is about um, what I sort of figured out uh, in terms of being able to keep uh, the radio programming full. When we first started out, we were just like thinking, well, let's people just fill in times for shows that they want to do. But then you get this kind of clown pants, ragged schedule uh, that's not always having something playing. So by having predefined blocks that uh, people will fill in, um, then we can uh, turn things out. So I'm going to stop screen sharing. So hopefully I, I get rid of that crazy effect. And is there everybody there? Who's there? Hey, Zach! It's the Zach, man. I haven't heard you in a while, no. Noise Professor. No. Really. Any questions from my uh, student audience? I have no questions. Yeah, no, no questions. No questions. Oh, I mean, what are some good ways to make sure that like people jump in and, and you know do this? Um, you know, I've I've gotten once you get the hang of it, you know, I can fill out a week in about twenty minutes to half an hour, especially if I'm going to be like um, not very particular and just going to grab stuff and using the web streams, you can fill out stuff really quick. But if you really want to curate it and put together some really good playlist. That would be really helpful for people just to go in to the um, library already and um, and just fill out some of the uh, playlist um, so we have more playlists to work with or more smart blocks um, or interesting things to upload. And, you know, I, mean, we have I, a lot of I think I'll probably start uploading some of my library. I have over 12,000 songs sitting in my iTunes library. Um, okay, now I we don't start. have that much disk space, so... <laughs> I can just start throwing some things on there that we can have maybe a little bit more variety and some things that uh, people aren't used to hearing. Um, That'd be good. And I'll probably also start putting together some of my own playlists um, that I, you know, every once in a while I'll get on maybe once a week and do my own show. Um, I can just put together one of those and fill up two hours, three hours, something like that. That would be great. And, and the cool thing is about... You know, you can make shows out of stuff you upload and stuff that's in the mix. And once you create that as a playlist, like, I can go in and say, I like Daniel's show so much, I'm just going to put it on there. So, you know, I've been throwing followers, followers of the Apocalypse on there all the time. And, like, I put in dog songs every week, which probably people don't want to hear. But um, if you're tired of the programming on DS106 Radio, which I don't think anybody said they are, um, it, it's good to go. But what we really want to do is what was happening a lot um, and, until uh, you know, we started getting in and filling with this, there's a lot of times you go in there and there'd be nothing, um, and that's just not good. Yeah, I think I was listening uh, four or five days ago, and it was just dead air, and that hurt my feelings, so I had to go live and do my own thing. That that's a good man, Daniel Zimmerman. Take note, <laughs> take note from DS106 UMW student Daniel Zimmerman. He's a good man. Some days I I didn't remember to schedule things out. Um, and so what I do sometimes is you can just go into that um, what's playing now, and if you see that there's nothing on the schedule, you can just throw things right onto that timeline, um, which is kind of a, a fun way to go. It, it might be kind of fun to do like a spontaneous show because you could sit there, and while one song is playing, you could throw the next one in, and that would be almost like doing a little bit of, of live uh, DJing. Yeah, certainly could do that. It just You wouldn't have to talk into a microphone. Yeah, yeah, you just you just mixing, you know. Yeah. Um, of course, if someone comes in and broadcast, you know, they'll they'll you know, they'll cut over what you're but doing. But that solves the problem of dead air. So that we solves can't really the problem. Complain about air. that too much, can we? Yeah, dead air is the best air. <laughs> That's where Zach is. <laughs> That's what you've been breathing, pain. Zach. You've been breathing dead air, man. I thought you got pure air up there in the Sierra. <laughs> <laughs> I want a pair of custom clown pants, also. You and a pair of custom clown pants. Yeah, that I will wear when I broadcast on DS106 Radio. Uh, well, you know, uh, we can... Um, I don't think I have a response to that, but... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should I do a have, Kickstarter. <laughs> I have my t-shirt. Uh, I never got my socks. Um, oh, the, the and, socks and kind of fell through the cracks. <laughs> I'm going to take that up with Jim Groom. Uh, I suggest you go out to Walmart, buy some socks and a Sharpie. And a Sharpie. And, and write DS106 Radio on your own socks. <laughs> and you'll have the most unique socks anywhere. I will. It'll be the only pair. <laughs> Any pair. 
Let's see, custom clown pants. Let's see, we're DSP all uh, TV. Hey, we can make that happen. Actually, that's well. Uh, Tim's repurposed that, I think. Uh, blah 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 blah. I'm checking the Twitters right now. Um, hopefully, you folks got the hang of it. I did. Um, I've got a blog post with sort of text explanation. I just did some real quick, uh, crappy screencast uh, today, and then uh, we'll have this recording. And um, hopefully, some other people will get in the mix. Um, I don't mind doing it, but I'm going to start forgetting uh, pretty soon because I'm half senile. <laughs> Anything else from the uh, mute student audience? Daniel's the only one talking. Jason's active in chat. Andy Forgrave, where do we find the web stream? Is there what, do you mean, what do you mean, where do we find the web stream? Rad.io slash listen. Is that what he's talking about? I don't know. Andy might have to explain a little bit more. Where do you find the web streams? The so status page? Uh, you mean to listen to? You know how to do that. You built the player, Andy. <laughs> Speak, Andy. Hey, Gina. <laughs> I can't tell where Andy's typing or talking. This is the Hangout. Use your microphone, man. CBC3. You... Oh, finding Everybody's... the web stream? Oh. Oh. That was a little bit tricky. I, I did some Google searches, Andy, for... Um... Somebody's got an open mic. Yeah, oh, that's me now. I just uh, unmuted my mic. Where's, okay. Um, you uh, I... added the CBC3 to, the, uh, to a block. Where you can't that... get it. You, you can't get it from the CBC because they don't expose them. <laughs> No, no, but you had a list of, of web streams that you were looking at. Where did that list come from? Oh, all right, let me go back to screen sharing. That's what happens because I, I go way too fast. All right, you're going to get the crazy uh, Twilight Zone window effects here and go back to DS106 Radio. Um, um, when you're in the library, you can just check them out. Um, uh, the, the basically this is a search thing so if you toggle this uh, first menu to web streams this shows you all the web streams um, and the CBC radio one is right there um, and uh, when you're ed editing like if you just wanted to throw something in or working on one of the schedule blocks um, same interface uh, you can come over to uh, I hear you, Gina. Um, to the web streams, and if you wanted to throw that CBC Radio uh, web streams, come on, flick. Um, if you just wanted to throw that into the mix before all this other stuff, you can actually just throw it in there. You can't put anything into uh, green because that's playing live. Um, I guess I haven't tried out. You can actually. Um, oh, that won't work because that's in a filled block. Um, you could probably delete something that's currently playing. I don't. I haven't sort of experimented with that. Um, but uh, is that what you're looking for, Andy? Crazy windows. Right. Crazy so, windows. Okay, so you um, you search, and then pull down the web stream. So that's good. So if I had something that's not listed there currently, how do we create an entry for a web stream that's not currently there? Uh, you've got to find the URL for an MP3 stream. It's got to be something that will play in a browser. Okay. I don't know if you caught. Did you see when I did that little walkthrough demo? Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. Andy Forgrave. I don't know. It's like Twitter or something going on. I was right, watching. Andy, Andy, I want you to buy this book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got it. Up I want I you to read the book. I got, I got the book. I got it up. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, Ben keeps sending me those reminders about the Thursday night. Isn't it tonight? Yeah, Did you missed it. Tonight? Yeah. Oh, I missed it. I must have been doing something else then. All right. Do you want me to okay. go through that little? Do you want me to go through that little bit yeah. again? Well, that's good. I'll uh, poke around and see if I can. Uh, I, I, I did a screencast today that that um, has it. Um, the thing is, like. Um, a lot of uh, stream, live streams you'll get. It's so nice to see you, Gina. You got video, girl. Um, is that uh, there'll be uh, MP3. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey. 
Don't you love, you, love the lag? You are live there. Um, uh, you'll either get M3U, which are playlist files, um, or PLS. Uh, you can open those up and find the MP3 streams. You'll get some ASX things, which are Windows media, which don't work. Um, and anything that's like a, um, a flash player won't work either. Um, and that was the problem with uh, a lot of the... C when you go to the CBC website, all they have are flash players. And they've completely hidden... Uh, their streams, but uh, I did some Googling and found some people who created some backdoor uh, MP3 versions of CBC radio streams. That's, that's, that stuff's a little bit hairy, but Andy, I know you. You're a sharp guy, and you'll figure it out. <laughs> Andy is a sharp guy, for real. <laughs> For reals. Look at that. You got chairs and everything, Gina. Are you outfitted? <laughs> I am. I might be hovering. You don't even know. I could be hovering right now. <laughs> uh, you, you do have that kind of cosmic balance for sure. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to. All right. I'm going to stop the. Um, <laughs> the hangout broadcast.